All right, let's start with a surface view of the anterior ankle here. All right, you can see medial, lateral. So um, again, on the lateral side, the fifth metatarsal is going to be palpable right about here. Lateral malleolus in most patients can be palpated here. Calcaneus, um, the navicular, the medial malleolus. These are all some of the hind foot structures you can palpate. Um, let's um, get past the skin layer here. So um, here is a lateral view, fifth metatarsal, one of the prominent structures on the lateral side of the foot. And you can see here there are insertions of the um, perineus uh, tertius, the um, perineal brevis. And um, you can imagine with uh, motion of these um, muscles, so what are they? What do they um, provide? They provide a little bit of plantar flexion, uh, as shown here, but um, also eversion, right? So eversion shown here, and you can see motion through the uh, posterior facet of the uh, subtalar joint and through the talonavicular joint here. So if um, you know these muscles are inserting here to provide eversion, you can imagine with forceful inversion. Uh, in the opposite direction, that that can create an avulsion of the base of the fifth metatarsal here, right? So that's something that we sometimes see with inversion injuries, okay? Um, other uh, things seen with inversion, oh, let's just actually move on to the next palpable structure, the fibula, right? So the lateral malleolus or fibula sits on the lateral side of the ankle, palpable in most patients. Um, insertion of uh, all your lateral ankle ligaments, including as shown here, the uh, anterior talofibular ligament. So again, when you are assessing for an ankle sprain, you wanna um, you know, put your finger right there at the distal end of the anterior part of the um, lateral malleolus. Um, what's a little harder to palpate are the syndesmotic ligaments or sort of those tib-fib ligaments. Here you can see a nice representation of the anterior tib-fib ligament, right? So with so-called high ankle sprains or syndesmotic sprains, you can injure this ligament. Okay, next palpable structure, uh, bony structure I want to review is the calcaneus, right? So uh, the heel, you can see that um, you know, it's not a lot of um, muscle attachments, but uh, on the plantar surface, you have the uh, um, attachment of the uh, plantar fascia. Um, so plantar fasciitis typically is elicited by tenderness on the plantar surface of the heel. Uh, the Achilles tendon, prominently shown here, inserting of the posterior aspect of the calcaneus, and sometimes you can get insertional tendonitis in this area. Um, and of course, the Achilles tendon, as, as most of you know, provides um, plantar flexion of the tibiotalar joint. So let's move on to the medial side here. So on the medial side, the medial malleolus is going to be a very palpable uh, structure. Uh, that is the medial end of the tibia, right? And you have your deltoid ligaments as shown here. So the deltoid ligament sort of a wide-shaped uh, uh, structure, and those are your medial ankle ligaments. And within certain sprains, you can injure that as well, and certainly with, cert with um, some uh, malleolar fracture patterns, um, sometimes when you don't get a medial malleolus fracture, you occasionally will get a deltoid ligament tear. Um, let's move on to the uh, navicular. So the navicular is shown here. Uh, maybe uh, might help to uh, isolate that. Uh, let's see if we can do that for you. There it is. So, you know, it's kind of hidden in there. Uh, a lot of articular surface on the navicular. Um, it is, uh, let's get it back to where it goes. Maybe we can uh, highlight it a little bit. Uh, oh, actually, let's bring it back into view. So the um, way to find the navicular is that it is on the medial side of the foot, and you can see tibialis anterior, right? So tibialis anterior runs right past it. So very frequently, you can identify uh, the navicular uh, by palpating between the, um, or palpating right behind the uh, uh, tibialis anterior and then your tibialis posterior, right? So it kind of runs in between the two, 
on the medial side of the foot. Um, and of course, the um, forefoot structures, you can typically palpate most of your metatarsals. Here you can see your long extensors. Um, so that's some of the, I think, pertinent surface anatomy correlated uh, anatomically here on the, this specimen. So with the foot and ankle, um, there's very little soft tissue. So there's a lot of bony landmarks uh, that you can palpate. And again, because uh, ankle injuries are not uncommon, you often have to really know where your bony landmarks are if you're trying to elicit bone pain, for instance, or, ten or uh, tendon or ligament pain to indicate a fracture versus a tendon injury versus a sprain. So, um, so we're here on the lateral side of the ankle, and then what I'll do is I'll show the medial side on the other foot. So lateral side of the ankle, you have a very prominent lateral malleolus, okay? And um, the other thing um, is the base of the fifth metatarsal. So if you remember where the metatarsals are, they're roughly in this part of the foot here. And I'll show this on the bone model. Uh, the base of the fifth sticks out a little bit. So there's a little bit of a sort of a prominence. You have this sort of soft spot, and then all of a sudden there's this bony prominence here. The reason it's important is because you, the fractures of the fifth metatarsal base are pretty common. So if you can identify where that is and elicit pain, you should be worried about a fracture. Um, so let's just uh, switch over to the bone model here. So this is the view we have. So lateral malleolus is your fibula or distal fibula. And then this is that soft area and then the fifth metatarsal base being right here. Okay, you can see it sort of as a prominent tuberosity that sticks out and uh, can be avulsed or fractured. Um, so remember, the ankle is a, uh, it's a hinge joint, essentially. Uh, the rest of the foot has, uh, has uh, many other joints, subtalar joints, uh, etc., that provide a lot of uh, other functions uh, for foot motion when walking. We won't go through all of those, uh, but um, at the ankle joint itself, or tibial tailor joint, is essentially a, a hinge joint where um, you have this motion. So, of course, one of the things you're going to check is for dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Um, the uh, uh, important tendons to keep in mind, uh, as seen on this view, are the peroneal tendons. Okay, as seen, you can see his peroneal tendon here is, um, you can see a little bit, I would say, uh, somewhat prominent. I'm inverting the foot to sort of allow it to pop out a little bit, and it should be coursing posterior to the fibula. Okay, so that's something you should look for. If it's somehow sitting up more anteriorly, that could be pathologic. Another important tendon you can see coursing across the front of the ankle here is the tibialis anterior tendon. And if you think about uh, where that comes in over the dorsum of the leg and then onto the uh, dorsum of the foot, this is uh, one of the main dorsiflexors of the ankle. And uh, there are uh, other extensor tendons coming across the dorsum of the foot. Uh, in some patients, you can even sort of palpate one of the superficial nerves. I can't really tell in him, but there's a superficial perineal nerve that comes over the dorsum of the ankle and foot and uh, is a very superficial structure that occasionally you can palpate, and you should be aware of it, certainly, in surgery. Um, let's uh, kind of move over to the medial ankle here. So this is the opposite foot, of course. And uh, here you have the medial malleolus, right? And um, I'll show this on our bone model here. So the medial malleolus is really the medial part of the distal tibia, okay? And that forms part of your ankle joint, and that's shown here, okay? And um, uh, just distal to the medial malleolus is your deltoid ligament, which is a ligament that can be sprained. And... Um, I guess maybe what else you can see here a little bit better than with the other view is the Achilles tendon. Okay, so the Achilles tendon should be a very discrete, very obvious tendinous structure. And again, you always have the contralateral side to compare to. Um, and uh, this is the prime tendon for uh, plantar flexion uh, of the foot. And I'm sorry, of the ankle. And uh, uh, if there's tendonitis or a tendon rupture, uh, this is uh, where you might want to look for that. And we'll show another exam to demonstrate that a little bit better. 
So when you're examining uh, the ankle, uh, one of the common things you'll be looking for is an ankle sprain, right? So um, the uh, deltoid ligament is one of the ligaments that can get sprained on the medial side of the ankle, but a much more common ligament to sprain is actually in the lateral ankle, and that would be your set of lateral ankle ligaments, or the anterior talofibular, posterior talofibular, and calcaneofibular ligaments. So, Again, going back to the bone model, these are ligaments that actually are uh, coming off of the fibula. So anterior talofibular, posterior talofibular, and calcaneofibular, or otherwise known as lateral ankle ligaments. So when somebody has an ankle sprain and their foot inverts, and you can see this is stretching over here, those are the ligaments that can get stretched or torn. So if a patient has that type of injury has swelling here and clearly has tenderness in this area. So you can see I'm distal to the lateral malleolus, and especially in this area, the anterior talofibular is the most commonly injured. But if you can isolate tenderness in this area, you should be worried about a ligament sprain. If you can isolate tenderness over the fibula, the bone, and you should really be able to tell the difference between the two spots, then you're worried a little bit more about a fracture. Now, Remember, it's a ligament, so you can stress test its integrity. Um, one way is to do uh, inversion of the ankle, but a more common way we do is actually uh, what's called a drawer test. So with the foot in neutral and in 30 degrees of uh, plantar flexion, you grasp the leg and you grasp the heel, and then you basically try to translate, translate the foot anteriorly with respect to the leg to see if there's if there's translation basically of the foot with these ligaments allowing that foot to translate basically distally in this direction. So that's how you would check for a ligament injury here. One other ligament or set of ligaments that you can injure, it's a little bit harder to put your finger on, are the uh, syndesmotic uh, ligaments. These are the ligaments that actually exist between the tibia and fibula. And these are anterior, there are also some posterior ligaments, and there's a membrane, the interosseous membrane, between the bones more proximally. So if a patient has an injury, uh, which is more likely to occur with external rotation, so um, imagine if the leg is stable here and the foot goes this way, or if the foot is planted and the body goes this way, then you could potentially get an injury of the syndesmotic ligaments. And those occur, um, if you can palpate, it would be tenderness, not so much down here, but maybe tenderness further up here in this area. And sometimes if you do that external rotation stress exam, this might reproduce pain by stretching those ligaments. So, it's difficult to fully assess the Achilles tendon with the patient's supine or even standing, so um, it can be very helpful to be prone. Uh, here you have also a very nice view of the calcaneus, um, but uh, the Achilles tendon is a tendon that can get injured, it can rupture or produce uh, inflammation or become inflammatory and have a tendonitis. So with the patient in the prone position, you can certainly inspect and see how the tendon looks side to side. Uh, you can also do something what's called a Thompson test, where you actually squeeze the calf and you look for plantar flexion of the foot. So you can see if I squeeze the calf, the foot plantar flexes, which essentially indicates that your gastrocnemius soleus complex is attached to the Achilles tendon. And it presumably, if it contracts, it's going to cause the foot to plantar flex. In patients with Achilles tendon ruptures, not only will you feel a possible defect here, and this tendon will be kind of swollen and soft and you can't feel like that sort of firm tendinous structure, but when you do this test, the foot will not plantar flex and it will kind of stay still and if you can check to the other side, you can confirm that it is indeed asymmetric and you worry about an Achilles tendon rupture. So uh, let's move into the foot. So in the foot itself, um, again, a lot of uh, bony landmarks. Um, you have to just recognize, the, obviously, you have the toes uh, and their phalanges, and then the, the metatarsals, 
uh, and then you have the actual tarsal bones. It's a little bit difficult to palpate one versus the other. Uh, we did talk about the fifth metatarsal base, which you need to be aware of, especially when evaluating ankle injuries. Um, you can uh, get midfoot sprains as well. So a midfoot sprain might um, exhibit with pain in roughly this area, in the mid part of the foot, at the tarsal metatarsal joints. Not a very mobile joint. It's a little bit more mobile laterally. One way you can check for uh, instability here is actually to get a, a standing radiograph or stress radiographs, but you can attempt to stress in either this direction or possibly in this direction uh, with abduction here to see if you can uh, cause stress and pain to uh, indicate possibly a midfoot sprain uh, in these cases. Um, but it's just important to at least recognize uh, and distinguish your, your, your metatarsal from uh, the toes itself, recognize where the metatarsophalangeal joints are. Um, you uh, also are going to see patients who present with uh, heel pain, and it's important when someone has heel pain to recognize is it the Achilles tendon? Is this something more in the calcaneus tuberosity, like a bony problem here? Or is it uh, uh, what's called the plantar fasciitis? And the plantar fascia is a band on the plantar aspect of the foot, uh, and pain with plantar fasciitis is often right about here. So I'm on the somewhat medial side of the, um, of the heel, uh, on the plantar surface, and um, sometimes this can become inflamed and painful uh, by dorsiflexing the, the, the great toe and putting a little bit of stress on that. You can see it kind of puts that plantar fascia under a little bit of tension, and that might elicit pain. So that's another common uh, source of pain in the foot, especially a, a, a form of heel pain that you should recognize where that anatomy is.